Follow the paint, mate. Yep. Got to be. No other way to drive. Don't use no other pedals. Only one. And that's flat out. <laughs> Hi hey everybody, so in the last three episodes we covered the first three DVDs. They were all based in Ireland, um, between North and the South. And at Grassmen we were starting to think that, do you know what? People were starting to buy those DVDs from the UK. They were actually starting to buy them from strange places. And, you know, at the, in the early days my wife uh, would have handled all the shipping. Uh, and postage and packaging after her day's work, you know, because as I say, you're a business that was building and she'd be starting to fill me in in the evenings and saying, you know, Gareth, we started posting, I posted one to Norway and one to Sweden and a few to New Zealand or whatever. And you start to say to yourself, hmm, but we really noticed the UK audience was starting to follow us and starting to increase. So the obvious thing was we need to go to England and make a video. So where do we go? How do we go? And at that stage, people were starting to see us. And then came a, a, an email one day uh, from the Firsts, Luke First, And they were just saying, if we were ever down about in Devon, call in and see them. And of course we went, you know, as a boy, I think it's Facebook stalking now it's called, but back then it was website stalking. <laughs> We went and checked the website and we'd seen all this plant and stuff and we were like, whoa, we have to go here. That's what we did. We, we, we made arrangements that we were going to do a scouting trip over to the UK. The plan was to go and speak to two or three businesses and, you know, see how we could start to creep into the UK and do some filming. And Suzanne first, Luke's wife, Suzanne, she was like, look, you guys get here, I look after you and all the rest of it. And so we thought, well, cost of the boat, drive down, not be too bad. So off we went, well, <laughs> we thought it was only, <laughs> our mummies at home knew how to look after people. Well, that's not necessarily true. The, the hospitality, we were taken into the first farm, treated as one of the members of the first family we were put up, we were looked after, we were, and, and it made going there to film extremely easy. Made it both pleasurable and easy. We had access to an office to, to do a little bit of work from, and we, we were able to come and go as we pleased. So we had drove all the way to just outside Launston in Devon, which is a long way away from here, let's be honest. You don't go much further. And we started to see a business that just was beyond anything that we had worked with before. It was with an earth moving business, an agricultural contracting business, and really an arable growers business because they, they did a lot of work themselves. They had a lot of plant, they had a lot of tricky conditions. They were guys that could engineer and come up with things a little bit different. And they had Mad Mike. Yeehaw! Well, we got uh, the famous Mad Mike. Uh, drives the Puma 210. Mike would be our top driver on the agricultural side. He does a lot of the tillage work, spreads a lot of lime, and uh, does the big square baling in the summer behind the combines. Uh, he uh, works like a, well, he just works like a horse, really. Don't stop. He's the drill man. They call him the dog because he stays out all night. When you see that red thing coming, you know to get out of the way, because uh, if you don't, you just end up in the hedge anyway. He's a nutter. <laughs> You know, Mike has become an integral part of the Grassman brand ever since, and we were just blown away by this guy, Mike. We were blown away by versus the fact that so much could be happening. You know, it could be all focused on roadworks and dozers and diggers one day, and then the next day it's combines everywhere. It's just really was a little bit overwhelmed at times, and it was the first time, and the versus in that particular year, they were entered into the, the Farmers Weekly uh, Contractor of the Year um, and they came runner-up and, and in part of that they invited us, we were at the Grosvenor House Hotel in London, I mean this doesn't really do fancy hotels but we were there, we were at the table with them and it was a fantastic experience. We spent maybe weeks there at times 
you would get out in the morning and if they were under a little bit of pressure, you were able to set the camera down and just go and do something. So remember going off with a loading shovel and loading straw bales for a morning. Just little things like that off camera that just, it was fantastic to be able to do something. And they also were running the Farmer's Weekly Tractor Test that year. They had the John Deere, the Case, the Landini and the Fint. And they were looking at all the four different tractors. And it was, content was so interesting. Luke and Lloyd were very good at talking and very easy to listen to. And we also brought Jimmy over to meet them and look at some of their old tractors. So it was just very, very exciting. Touchdown, right down hard. Right down hard. Don't worry, Jimmy. You're not letting us down. It's not that embarrassing that you can't get her fired up. And um, it was our first adventure in to, as I say, the UK. And we produced two DVDs from it because there was so much content we couldn't get it into to the one. So it's these ones, Keep Her Lit and Sustain the Flame. And there was big things happened there. Like, we come from Full of the Pipe where we seen the 650 Crone and these guys had a class 900 at that time. The 900 had blew two or three engines up and they really weren't happy. And we were standing there watching it all unfold before our eyes. They, they lost, they basically lost the rag for want of a better word. So they went and bought a Crone 700. So Crone had moved from the 650. This was like the first of the new series. They bought it. We got to see it being PDA'd at Compass Tractors. We got to help lead the lorry in you know, that delivered it and just to be involved in all those parts was fantastic. At that time, it felt fantastic just to be involved. It was unique, it was new, it was something different. And then the combines. touched and then it had to do with combines and that's probably why Sustain the Flame um, would be my favourite of the two of them just because we were seeing different things one of the things that we did in this DVD was we had bought our first machine as such at Grassman we had bought our first lorry and we spoke to Kane Trailers and we said that we had looked at the trailers that the Firsters were running and we couldn't understand in our head why these guys wouldn't want to be running trailers like Cane Trailers over there. And We spoke to Cane Trailers and we did a bit of a deal to, to take one of the trailers over and they tried it in the maze and then they bought three. Now that was awesome. That, that was just something that we were like, wow. I actually took something, they seen the benefit of it and, 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 they, bought, and they bought three of them and it was just... That was the level at which we were able to get involved and I particularly enjoyed that. It felt really, really good to be at that level and the plan was this year to, to go back and see them and say hello to them. As, a, as we make this video here, we're unsure if that'll be possible with 
um, this global pandemic that's going on. But we would love to be back over there uh, and saying hello to them because uh, this is the first year that we're technically going to the Royal Cornwall show. Again, we don't know what's going to happen. Yet. We know it's postponed at the minute from its original date. So, yeah, watch this space. But two very good DVDs, completely different step aside from what we normally did and it did it did exactly what it was intended to do from a business point of view it was well received and taken on board within the uk market and it helped us grow our business and extend our business to that market and that was i suppose the key objective for us at that time do you know what i might actually put sustain the flame on again and watch it it's been a while <laughs>